Hey what's up guys, I'm Nitij and in this video, I'm going to walk you through a very basic UI test automation project created in Visual Studio using NUnit and Selenium. The programming language being used over here is C Sharp. So this is the third part in a series of videos in which I'm demonstrating the various aspects and parts of UI automation of our web applications. You should especially check out the first two parts of this series if you are a beginner and have just started to learn about UI automation using NUnit and Selenium. The links are given in the description. Otherwise, if you just want to see a basic setup of an automation project in Visual Studio, then I guess you can watch this video directly. Alright, so I have created a very basic project, but first I want to make one thing clear that there can be literally hundreds of ways in which we can structure our projects based on our needs. The implementation which I am about to show you is the very basic and modular way in which we can write unit tests of individual UI pages and components. You are by all means free to learn from it if you find it useful or maybe discard it completely if you find it meaningless. In any case, I hope that this video will prove beneficial for you. Alright, so enough of this chit chat and let's now see the automation project structure. This project is using this bootstrap admin template which is called as SB admin 2 and the test classes are basically interacting with different pages like navigating to the pages and then the code within the test class and test methods are just interacting with the different components and inputs within those pages so you can download this bootstrap admin template and maybe you can play around with it if you want to there are tons of html elements which you can play around with so do take a look at it if you are feeling like it and now coming back to the actual project i'm going to explain to you the different parts of this project one by one so the first part is this class which is main.cs and this is a single point of entry and exit to open and close chrome web driver you can see that this main class has been associated with this setup fixture attribute what this means is when there is a method within this class associated with the attribute one time setup then this method will execute first before any other test method is executed it simply means that we can use this method execution to do any kind of initialization stuff like over here we are creating a new chrome web driver using a singleton and i will come to that in a moment how singleton is being used over here but just know that if we want to initialize our web driver in a very particular way or if we want to do anything extra or anything else which should be done before any other test method or any other test class is executed then we can do that over here in this class and in this method there is another method which is associated with one time teardown attribute. It simply means that when all the test methods have been executed, then this method will be called. So um, we can use this method context to do any kind of cleanup operation that we need to. Like for example, we can close the web driver instance, which we are using. Next up is the singleton class that we are using in this project for the web driver. So instead of creating a new web driver instance in each test class, this project is dealing with that problem by having a singleton class for the web driver and it is called as web driver singleton. So if you don't already know what a singleton class is, it will always have a single copy in the memory of this application. So whenever we will access the get instance static method of this web driver singleton class, then we will always get the single initialized instance which is a static member of this class and this instance will always be a single copy in the memory so we will not have to initialize this over and over again we simply have to access this get instance method for the first time and then this instance will be initialized and then we can reuse it over and over again so for instance in this main.cs class this web driver singleton dot get instance method is being called once and when this method will be called for the first time then the singleton will be initialized and then in any of the other classes whenever we will call the get instance to fetch the instance of this web driver singleton then the already initialized instance will be returned instead of creating a new copy of this classes object inside the memory so you get the idea this is just a simple case of code reuse okay so next let's just talk about the file hierarchy of this project this entire solution contains two projects the first one is this automation project and the second one is this shared so in this automation project, you have already seen the main class, which is the main entry and exit point for all the other test methods and test classes. Inside this project, we can have individual test classes for each 
UI page and for each UI component and we can structure all of these classes similar to how the application navigation has been set up. So for example, you can see that this buttons and cards navigation links are contained as a child of this main components navigation item. Similar to that, there is a folder with the name components and under that components folder, we have the class for the button page and for the cards page. What this means is you can try to emulate the same navigation structure which is inside the application within the project or you may like to change it but try to make it meaningful and systematic so that if any other team member comes in to try to do something with your project and to make changes to it then they will be able to understand what has been done over here and they will be able to find their way around within the folder and file structure which we have created for our project so that is something to keep in mind so always try to have a single test class for any ui page and component and structure them in your folder accordingly. Next up is a configuration file for settings like file paths and application URLs. Instead of hard coding the application URLs to which you want to navigate using the Chrome driver, what you can do is you can have a single configuration file in which you can have all the URLs which you want to navigate to to test the application. Now, the URLs can be different the development url can be different the internal qe url can be different there could be urls for external qe for staging for production etc we can have all of those urls within the configuration settings and we simply have to switch to a different url in the configuration whenever we need to instead of updating their references everywhere in the source code files where they have been used so this is always a good idea to keep this kind of information in configuration settings now coming back to this configuration file this is a simple xml file and the code which is being used to fetch the value of the url which is contained inside it is over here in this method get app url so you can see that this method is in the class common logic and it is contained within a separate project which is called as shared so this is another thing to look at that if you want to have some common logic which needs to be used across the entire ui automation project then we can have that coding logic within a separate project which could be called as shared and it can be used across everywhere all we need to do is to simply import the namespace of that shared project and then we simply have to use the classes in the way that we need to like over here in this cards.cs file the common logic class instance is being created and then the get app url method is being called to fetch the application url and to navigate the chrome web driver to that url Another example could be, let's say we want to fetch current date in the short format, then instead of repeating this logic everywhere in the test classes, we can simply have a method for it in the shared project and then we can call this method directly. What you have seen over here is that this project structure promotes modularity. So we do that by having different test classes for all of the different UI pages and components. This has several added benefits that none of the test classes are dependent upon each other and they can be executed separately. Also so multiple developers can work on multiple classes if the project is hosted within a source control system or maybe a version control system and this means that the development time for the UI test project can be significantly lower when there will be multiple people working on it as compared to a single one. So these were all of the features which are available in this test project but there is definitely room for improvement and I'm going to list down some of the ways in which this project can be improved. First one is reading test cases from external file. If you don't want to have a separate test case attributes for all of the test methods and you just want to keep the test case inputs in an external file then you can do that too but then you will have to create a mechanism to read those test case inputs from that external file second one is error handling so you can see that right now there is no error handling in all of these test classes and test methods and we can have some kind of error log or error report generated for all of the different errors if they arise in any of the test method and I'm not talking about the failing assertions I'm talking about the basic syntax errors or maybe some kind of other errors while executing the test commands so that is something to keep in mind another upgrade for this project can be the creation of testing reports so when we will have all of the test methods run what we can do is we can create a report of all of the past and failed assertions within those test methods so that we can pass that around to maybe you know other team members or maybe some managers to look at to see which areas were impacted after the last change in the project etc there can be multiple ways by which the test reports can be utilized within our team another improvement that can be done is that we can make this project 
part of the build and deployment process so what we can do is whenever the project is built and deployed on any of the servers then we can automate the running of these test cases so that we don't have to run them manually we don't have to run all of the test methods whenever the application is deployed we can queue up some of the test classes and test methods which will be responsible for testing out the critical functioning of the application so that it will not crash on the server finally i just want to show you how this entire project will work and how the different test classes and the test methods will run so i'm first going to comment out this webdriver.close statement within the main.cs class and now let's just run all of the cases by clicking on this run all link in the test explorer all right so webdriver has run and chrome has been opened first the buttons page has been navigated to and this button is being clicked now it's the card one and this link has been clicked now the login page and test at example.com now this register page and the inputs for first name last name and email have been put inside the text fields so all of these page navigations are being controlled by different classes so that would be everything to learn in this video thank you so much for watching it and i hope that you will find it useful please do let me know what you think about it and subscribe to the code first channel for more such videos i am nitej and i will see you in the next video till then take care of yourselves and have a great time